Hello everyone, I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD, and the topic has come up a few times this week about elevated liver enzymes. Okay, so let's dive in. Liver enzymes are those uh, protein substances, for instance, that we can measure as a byproduct of liver metabolism. Now, there are other liver studies that typically will go hand in hand with those enzymes in the evaluation process. So typically, there will be bilirubin with a direct and indirect, uh, and that's one uh, portion of the assessment. There will be a total protein. And then there will be some of what we call the transaminases. So we have AST and ALT and GGT, and those are uh, just a, um, a few, or I should say the standard ones that we will measure as your general liver health. Now, as a byproduct of your general liver health, this is also where triglycerides may come in which everybody seems to think of them mostly in the lipid family of assessment or your cholesterol assessment, but many times it will go hand in hand with a liver assessment. And then there are some specialty tests, which I will dive into. So as a general panel, you may get some liver enzymes and your physician may have a discussion with you because some of those liver enzymes were elevated. Now, I like to view all of the blood work as one big puzzle that has been filled in such that all those puzzle pieces such as the bilirubin and the transaminases and the triglycerides and the sugar related issues as well as some of the hormone studies will all start playing a bigger role and in that each particular level may not be particularly significant. So when I have a patient whose liver enzymes are elevated, first of all, I will say that the average transaminase typically isn't a big issue or indicative of a big liver problem unless it is triple normal. So uh, this is just a random assessment. So for instance, if one of the enzymes or the ALT normally is 25, we start getting some concern when it is 75. Okay. So what are some of the possible reasons for some of these liver enzymes to be elevated? Well, a lot of times we will talk about inflammation, infection and other metabolic issues. So when it comes to elevated transaminases that are quite elevated, we might start looking for hepatitis. Okay, so hepatitis, all that literally means is inflammation of the liver, HEPA or hepatocytes. So we may go after some viral hepatitis studies. Uh, the classic ones are hepatitis A, B, or C. And we can dive into each one of those topics at some other point, but that might be the next layer of assessment for the infectious etiology. Now, I will also say as a sidebar, if someone might be septic, such that the source of infection has come from somewhere else, and that liver is under assault trying to break a lot of that down, the liver also may have a, may be a byproduct of a septic picture as well. So the infection may be coming from elsewhere and not inherently in the liver itself. So you have several viral hepatitides uh, hepatitis possibilities. The liver obviously can have some bacterial sources and some abscesses and uh, even very rarely fungal etiologies, but that would be the infectious potential cause. A very common cause 
of elevated liver enzymes is the fact that the gallbladder might be having some troubles. Okay, that gallbladder is designed to take some of that bile from the liver and store it and then eject it out at a high fatty meal. So let's say that the gallbladder is ineffectual at trying to squirt out the extra bile to emulsify the fats. Well, now you're gonna have a backlog of bile into the liver and all enzymes and the bile uh, will be elevated because the liver's just congested and cannot get it into the common bile duct or, or to get its uh, completed job. So that with the gallbladder can be simple things like it just doesn't behave properly and it's pooping out or it's full of gallstones. Now in between all that, if the pancreas is having problems, at that common bile duct, of course, we can have a backlog of these same liver enzymes. And if the pancreas is having dysfunction or cancers or whatnot, this also can play a role to the liver. But this, again, is not very common. There are some inflammatory conditions and autoimmune conditions such that if the immune system is inflammatory, sometimes there can be autoimmune types of hepatitis. So again, autoimmunity can play a role for some of these elevated liver enzymes. I will say probably the two most common of the elevated liver enzyme family would be alcoholic or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, fatty liver disease comes from um, years of assault and attack of the body, simply just having too many carbohydrates or too many sugars that they just cannot get into the cell and use readily. So the body's trying to package them up in groups of three called triglycerides and little packets and trying to manage it in any other way and what winds up happening is a lot of that also will get congested or backlogged at the liver and the liver can't process and break down some of those extra triglycerides anymore and there will be a fatty streaking of the liver parenchyma such that some of the good healthy liver cells or hepatocytes are now being replaced by fat so the liver is being rendered ineffective. So those cells that are left over to try to get the work done are working hard, and this is why you're seeing some of the elevated liver enzymes. Obviously, alcohol must be detoxed by the liver. Sugars are being broken down, and sometimes it's just too much of a good thing trying to process through that liver, and the liver can't handle it over time. And this is why you start seeing some of the elevated liver enzymes in alcoholic and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We can clearly assess this picture not only by the enzymes, but doing either ultrasound or MRI to assess the health of the liver. If the fatty streaking and the liver is under such assault, it can scar down or get what's called cirrhosis, okay? Now, if these liver enzymes uh, are going up in to such a degree that they are so elevated and can't be managed, the, the system can become acidotic, the body's trying to break down all these enzymes. It's got to get clear through the kidney. You can get something that's called hepatorenal syndrome and so on. But these are the trickle down effects when this is um, at an end stage point. The beautiful thing about the liver and these liver enzymes is most times there is a way to figure out what is going on with them so that you can stop it in its tracks, and even hopefully reverse the process. 
So there may be some of you out there that are concerned about how you protect your liver. And I would say, be very mindful uh, of excessive medication use. And this can be uh, e even over-the-counter products such as Tylenol products. Of course, a lot of the opioids have to run through the liver, but honestly, our liver is the primary detoxification center such that if you are on statins and blood pressure medication and opioids and and pain management this is a lot to process let alone if you're adding in over-the-counter products on top of it and then if you're adding in alcohol or other substances that all are competing at that liver to try to break down these processes okay so let's say you're not on any of those medications and you just want to have good overall health. Well, food would be very important such that you keep a low carbohydrate diet, a low sugar diet, because honestly, sugar is poisonous to our system and the liver has to manage that with the whole triglyceride phenomenon that we talked about in the earlier part. So you want to be very good to your liver. And in that regard, foods that help with the liver are dandelions, cilantro, and things that like to detoxify, algae-based products and such as uh, spirulina and chlorella. Do a nice, constant, gentle detoxification. Milk thistle is very good as well as adding in some of your other anti-inflammatory ingredients such as turmeric. And again, if alcohol and sugar are a big problem, abstain. The less you run through that liver, the healthier it will become. Now there's also a proposal um, uh, that research is starting to notice that linoleic acid is also a big component of fatty liver disease. And that is a byproduct of a lot of our poor quality seed oils and vegetable oils that run rancid when you are cooking them at high heat and supplying your body of them. And again, that winds up being something that liver must break down and detoxify. Now there's a few genetic problems that are quite rare such as alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and so on that can actually affect the liver parenchyma. And again, some of those rare autoimmune issues. But I would say that it is good to have a yearly check with your physician. Liver health is typically part of your basic profiles. I also would say that if you're noticing some of these issues in your blood work, do not ignore it and start going to the functional approach of what in the world could be my trigger and what is it that I can do to promote my liver health in the future. Okay, I know that was a very quick and dirty explanation about liver enzymes and the potential reasons and how it may impact your health. There's so many other things we can discuss. And of course, if you're having individualized problems, you can consult me in my virtual office and we can get down to your root causes. I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD. Subscribe to my channel below. And until we meet again, be well.